and welcome back to my channel. So I'm here at BGS with Collections Manager Simon Hello. and we're going to be looking at some humongous ammonites. So these are the largest in their collection here and we're very fortunate to have access to these because they're usually on the top shelf in their kind of storeroom, collections room and so they've been brought down because they need specialist storage because they are huge. We're talking some of these weigh you know anything from 20 kilograms to over about 45 so they're extremely hard to move and maneuver and today we're not just going to be looking at them but we're going to be 3D scanning them with Simon who has made an amazing page online where you can access it and I'll link it down below so you can check it out where you can play around with the fossils here and even when they're this big you can just spin them around like they weigh nothing so you can really actually get to look at them so most of these were collected by SS Buckman and Simon's gonna talk to us a little bit about their origin and who he was. Okay, uh, Buckman was a, a Victorian gentleman essentially, he was born in 1860. Um, uh, his name was actually Sidney Savory Buckman, which I think is a fantastic name. Um, <laughs> Definitely. If, anyone, if anyone's called Savory then, uh, then let us know in the comments. <laughs> Uh, but he introduced the concept that you could use ammonites as, as index fossils in the Jurassic. So you could be looking at, if you were finding this kind of ammonite, you would know you were looking at a particular age of rocks. And also if you found this kind of ammonite, it's a different age of rocks. And by correlating them together, and he produced a, a seven volume uh, thesis of this called Buckman's Type Ammonites. Uh, it's, it's basically a hundred year old publication that we still use to this day to identify ammonites and to work out where we are in the actual sequence of rocks when we're out in the field without having to resort to expensive things like carbon dating to actually get to get dates on things it's amazing relative dating and how old are these specimens like how long have these been in the collections here do you think um we know certainly um buckman's uh, we bought some of buckman specimens and they were bought in in the 1920s and 1930s i believe wow. um, and we made several purchases and we have upstairs we have all the original documentation that relates back to that this particular one came via the geological society of london so it came to us in 1911 but it could have been collected anything in the, the hundred years previous to that so these are all they've all been here for over a century so that's quite amazing to and think about actually nearing two in, in some cases yeah and they're still looking good as new so we're going to now bring you guys with us and we're going to attempt to scan this fabulous titanites over here so let's get to it so we're now going to start the scanning process of this lovely fossil here so simon has the wonderful tool here that does the scanning so how does it work? Okay, this is what it's called a structured light scanner. Uh, it basically takes a lot of photographs under blue light with, with interference patterns like striped patterns. Mm -hmm. And the software analyzes all those photographs almost in real time. And it effectively stitches together the 3D structure um, as, it, as it happens. It's brilliant. It plugs in over USB. You Amazing. can scan anywhere. You can get your laptop. There's even a battery pack that powers the, the scanner as well. So you could even, in theory, take this into the field. Mm -hmm. We mostly use it on site, but it's brilliant because we can take it into the store, we can take it into our museum area, and we don't have to drag in things like tripods and, and targets and all that kind of thing um, yes, of because it's handheld and it can scan anything from this kind of size right down to almost thumbnail size is about the smallest hmm. it, can, it can happily do. Amazing. And we should, when we scan this, you should see it start to show up on the screen over there. So let's give this a go. Okay, so it's again one button press. I have a there's a kind of target range that it likes you to be in. And then when I'm ready, I just start going there and you'll actually see it's green, which means I'm about the right distance and I need to move the, the scanner around and back and come back a little bit. That's too far away, it's gone blue. Come in, I can move up a bit just to get right into that the gap around the ammonite. You actually end up looking at the screen, not the, not the thing you're scanning. Having a little think about it now. There it goes. Still thinking. Okay, I'm going to come back down. This really is just a test of how still you can hold the scanner and how smooth you can be. Definitely. And if you Does it usually take a few attempts or takes, is it pretty good? Something like this will take um, a few goes at scanning. Uh, I'm just come around there now. So wow, it's amazing, isn't it? How it just builds the up the image. Uh, well, we can also we can spin the specimen if we need to. That's another another way we can acquire the same image. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm going to come back over the top. That. To fill in all the just gaps. Just kind of iron over the surface. <laughs> and try and come around here. And then I will have missed a little bit in the bit that you are looking into, you as the viewers are looking into, but I'll stop now. And then we would do several scans and we patch them together, just like a, like a little kit. So that, that does that there. Amazing. And then we will just, let's see so I can zoom out there. And there we have. And there it is. That is the first bit. And then we would we turn Move it around it. to 180, match in all these bits and those bits. And then we flip it upside down and do the same thing. So we might get it done in yeah. kind of four or five scans. Perfect. So I'm now going to have a go at the scanning myself. So pick it up and, and press, press that button up. Up. Ooh. Okay, so you're now in preview mode. So you kind of got the, got the range sensor there. Well, am I doing and it then, right? And, and to start, press it up again. Oh, okay, like this. And yeah, you're going, so you're recording. And I just and keep going. Keep it at the same kind of distance, a little bit slower if you can. Come back a bit, so so you go to. That's it now. So it's going great because you're getting too close to it. So you really do have to. So you lost tracking there. That's a kind of just a, a new B error. Hold it still for a second. Okay. It might, it's, yeah, it's go. got it back. <laughs> oh 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 oh! Is that me? Am I? Yeah, it's uh, you know, moving. God, it's not as easy as it looks, is it? <laughs> uh, I would uh, pull pull down on the lever. Okay. So that's going to save that scan, and you can, you can have another go basically. Yeah. So, so what happened there was you kind of lost. Oh, lost, I've made a, lost the tracking. A, a, like uh, a double ammonite. A new ammonite there. Like a double species. So you've got you've got some data there. Yeah. But it's it's, it's practice makes perfect. Okay, I'll it? try one more time. So I go so up once, up once and, and then, then up down. again. Yeah. Oh, no, down again. Down. Okay. Up. No. So okay, get that preview coming. You are. Quite pointing at it, too close. Too close. Yeah. Other way, now it's about the right distance. So is it recording or now uh, I press uh, up? Push up. Recording in progress. So here's the finished product of what I managed to scan. So, you know, not bad for a first attempt, but definitely a little bit more holy than it should be. And then we'll have a look now at the lovely piece that Simon managed to get. So we'll see here the it's a lot more complete. So still, you know, you can see it takes quite a few scans to get the complete specimen ready. And then this is the final scan. So yeah, so then it took me four four scans to do that ammonite. So I did I did that one there. Yep. Uh, and then kind of did the other. So, like so you got the full the yeah the full circumference. Then, then I filled in the middle. Oh wow! Um, but look I've still at that. Got a hole at the back. So that, that was what we turned upside down. Yeah. And we did the back, filled the back in as well. Look um, at that! The, they they are amazing, yeah, aren't they? Yeah, and there's a kind of there's a um, an automatic alignment process where you yeah. can tell it roughly where you need them put, and it then moves them very carefully into place it moves each frame individually into place as best it can with its neighbors and then there's a process called fusion where it makes takes all your disparate scans and it puts them all into one amazing um, so you get that one there and then can just actually turn off the others so that's a, a full scan there and then there we have another nothing process. missing <laughs> yeah. we have another process called texturing uh, where we we drop the the photographic images onto that shape yeah so you effectively end up with a, a full 3d colored shape wow and that's uh, so we've acquired around um, six or seven gigabytes of data to make a, a one hundred and thirty megabyte scan. <laughs> Amazing! So a lot goes into each of these scans. Yeah, there's a lot of data. This is accurate down to about 0.2 of a millimeter. Wow! So if you had a 3D printer capable of printing this, you would be able to make a, a replica as near as faithful to the the real thing as you you 
almost would ever need. Oh, excellent. And all of these are accessible to the public online, aren't they? they? Will be. Yes, there'll be a link below. Amazing. So you guys can check out not just some of these massive ammonites, but a lot of other things in the collections here as well. Amazing. Thank you very much. Here is one of the largest ammonites in BGS's collection. This was found by SS Buckman and it's a Titanites. And I'll use my foot for size comparison. So this is humongous. Like it weighs a good 40 kilos and I'll flip it on its side now so you can see it. So I've got uh, some lovely helpers here, but it is huge, like absolutely massive. And you can see the lovely sutures that have been outlined here, probably done by Buckman that, himself. That was done by Buckman, yeah. So Simon just clarified. So no, it is a fabulous specimen. So I'll let you guys put that down now. Yes. Thank you. And then here are some more of Buckman specimens. So again, they are just huge, huge ammonites. And this is a Trophonites, um, correct me if I'm wrong. And then there's another one here, which is a little bit more hidden, but there's no need to prep it just yet unless it's needed for scientific purposes. So they are really amazing specimens. So that's all we got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and a massive thank you to Simon here from BGS for letting us see a bit behind the scenes and actually look at these amazing ammonites and how they 3D scan them. It was really amazing to see. So thank you very much for that. That's a problem. And um, if you'd like to see more here, just comment down below what you'd like to see and we'll try and get on to that. But uh, thank you again for watching. Like and subscribe for more and hopefully I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. So this is just the size comparison of this ammonite, like it is massive, like <laughs> humongous, but it is really, really beautiful. And I don't think it has a center, but you can see this outer world here. And it's just amazing that they even got to this size. Like you can imagine what these must have been like swimming around in our Jurassic seas. Truly remarkable. <laughs>